All right, tutorial number two. This is gonna be all about the tray edits and what it does. So this was something that we implemented a little while ago. It was a separate tool um, before, and basically it just adjusts traits for all players in the game to enhance gameplay. That's really the key component to this. Um, it makes a lot of players kind of have some of the same things. However, it doesn't make every player seem the same. Um, ratings still matter, so you know, if, if all the players have catch and bounds it doesn't mean that every single player is going to act exact, exactly the same but it just enhances gameplay overall um and i feel like it's a it's almost a must-have feature if i run a run a season um without using this trade tool um it just doesn't it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel as fluid so um i just recently on the discord in the dynamic progression tool channel and i pinned it as well uh i created a trait index to tell you just exactly what we did. So this is it right here. This breaks down exactly what all traits are going to go um, as. I'm not going to read it all. You guys can obviously read for yourselves, but I mean, just to uh, to you know basically break it down. All quarterbacks are going to have throwaway set to yes. All halfbacks, wide receivers are going to have uh, yards after catch set to yes. So on and so forth. Um, the only ones that might be a little confusing are force pass. So basically, what this means is any quarterback that has a throwing power under 85 is going to be set to conservative okay any quarterback that has an awareness above 84 that doesn't have a throwing power under 85 will be set to ideal so it's basically like an, an if and or an, uh, an if formula um in excel so this is the first one that gets ran and so anybody that falls under this doesn't matter for the next two okay they've already been set to conservative then you go to your next thing and this would be this one and then aggressive as everybody else um and then quarterback style same thing if your ball carrier quarterback ball carrier vision is under 66 they're a pocket between 65 and 80 they're balanced over 79 scrambling so that's this is what the trade tool does it's it's real basic there's nothing crazy to it but just by making these simple changes it it enhances the gameplay quite a bit um and again i think it's a key component so i'm going to take you through how to run this real quick it's it's super easy super easy um but one thing i just want to make sure i'm going to make this clear on every video that each one of these processes or you know these these stages that you're at it's it's its own stage so when you're running this you have to think of each one of them as their own tool so you have to run it from start to finish you can't anything you take from the franchise editor um for this for example this stage you can't use that same export for another stage or another thing and no that was a big confusion when i put the uh, trait tool and the ability tool together um in another workbook that i were i had put out before this one um people were pulling their their player table out for the tray edits making the tray edits it was exporting the file that you're supposed to put back into the franchise editor and then they were taking that file that was exported from my tool and trying to run it for the abilities which that's gonna, not going to work because if you guys have ever looked at my exports from my tools i only put in the columns that i want to change so when they're trying to import that tool back in for another part of the tool it just it f screws everything up so Every time you run something, you got to run it from start to finish, which means anything you take out of the franchise editor, you put into my tool. Anything my tool spits back out, you put back into the franchise editor. You save your franchise, then you're done. Now you can work on the next step. Okay, very important. Okay, so we're gonna work on tray edits right now. This doesn't matter what franchise you have, if it's a, a one you've you know started months ago or, or a new one that you're gonna start today, it all works the same. Um, so we're gonna go to the franchise editor. And all you need for this tool is the player table. So I'm going to open up. Doesn't matter what franchise I use right now. Uh, I'll just use this one. So you're going to go to the player table. It's been table 144 for a long time. It hasn't changed. Um, when this first came out, it was changing all the time. But it's pretty much always this. But for some reason, if it ever does change and it's not table 144, you can just type in player. And it's always going to be the very first one on the list. So anyways, here we are. So we're going to export this tool. 
already have my folder set up, so here's my trait test. I'm just going to name it 144 because that's the table that I'm running. Again, name it whatever you want when you do this stuff. Um, as long as you remember what it's called and you know where it's at, that's really all that matters. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to click on the trait edits. Now, I put these things in very specifically so you guys... Actually, two reasons. The first reason is so you know kind of what you're supposed to import just in case you're kind of confused. The second reason is I know I told you if you hit a macro, you're pretty much screwed. This will save you, okay? If for some reason you click on the wrong macro and you catch yourself right here, right? You can hit this X and it will pop up with this and you hit cancel, it'll say there's an error. In reality, nothing from the macro run, ran, just hit end. It's going to not finish things, so this stuff will pop up. You'll just have to click on this stuff to hide it, and you're back to your macros, and you're good. Again, this is why I, import, or I uh, implemented this whole thing right here, but if you do screw up and click on the wrong thing and catch yourself and you cancel and just hit end, that will save you from messing up your thing. And then also, instead of just hiding those like it did, you could just close everything out, don't save, and then reopen, and it'll come back to where you left off. You could do that too. Um, but those are really the only things that'll save you if you screw up because I haven't put in any kind of like backup plan for that yet because that would require more stuff to type put in. I just I want to get this thing out because I think it's ready to go, and I think people want to use it. So anyways, we're going to run the trade edits. Click on trade edits. It's going to tell you to import the player table, which is 144. So we're going to click OK. We're going to have to go find where you saved it. Mine was under trade edit test, 144. It's going to run. Blue circle spins as soon as it's done, which should be fairly quick. It doesn't take too long. There it is. I'm done. Okay. I always usually save every time I run something through this tool. Um, so practice that now, especially when you're doing your progressions and stuff like that. You have to save this tool every time you run it because when you come back in, it uses things that you ran before to base the next part off of. Very important to save it. And as another thing that came up a bunch of times where people couldn't figure out why their tool wasn't running right because nobody ever saved it. Um, yeah, very important to save it. I thought that was common sense, but obviously it's common sense to me, not common sense to everybody. I mean, obviously I built this tool, so. So we're done with this. I can go back to Franchise Editor. Um, if you want to see what the spit out is, it's going to be always be called Trade Edits Export. That's what it's called. Um, Let's finish this, and I'm going to show you one more thing at the end. So that's that's what it looks like. As I told you, I only import the columns that we need. Um, so if you look through here, it's only going to have the stuff we need right here. This was another important reason why you need to run each each stage of the tool in its own right, because if you try to use the same thing I just spit out, it's not going to have the right information in it for your next step. Um, anyways, back to Franchise Editor. You're going to import. We're going to go find my... This is the one we just did. Importing, imported successfully, saved, and we're done. Okay, I'm gonna close this out. We'll go back into Madden here real quick. I will also pull up that Discord picture again. We'll put that right there. Oh, I forgot my controller, hold on. And the wife put it where it doesn't go. Okay. So that was, damn it, I can't remember what the hell, was the, it was the old one, right? Oh, friend, ah, it should be the top. Yeah, so we'll do the old, that's the old one. So, for example, let's go look at wide receivers. So wide receivers should all have high point catch, yak and possession catch so go in here goodwin he's got possession aggressive and run of catch but high point catch is aggressive in case you didn't know um he's got fight for yards which all players have fight for yards on um do i have all i think the all the all hits cover ball is something that's, that's just uh default whatever they come up with I don't, yeah, that's not on here. Um, feet and bounds, 
all players yes he's got that and that's it for him so every single receiver should have all that stuff he has it all he has it all so again i don't have to go and show you that this worked right it did work right i know it worked right this is a tool that i've had set up for a while now um it's just part of this this now um defense lineman if you want to go look at that you can sit there and see bosa he's got swim move spin move bull rush which is d-line spin move spin move um bull rush isn't part of the thing we did but i think that's uh that was just default for him um not everything is going to show up like strip ball is on for all defense but it doesn't show up for defense alignment um it shows up for linebackers i'm pretty sure yeah well maybe not oh yeah it is strip ball it is right there let's say it should show up for somebody but yeah i'm almost positive it doesn't show up for Oh, sh never mind. I'm just stupid. I can't read. It's right there. So, anyways, um, so we're good to go there. Uh, curious. I don't even know how many quarterbacks are in the league that have a ball carrier division high enough to even. Okay, so Cam. Well, I guess there's quite a few wow okay so all these guys that have above these guys should all have scramblers set up on their scrambling qb style so yeah those guys are all scramblers there's a lot more than i thought there were gonna be wow look at that um yep scrambling qb style so that doesn't necessarily that doesn't mean their their player type is a scrambler like obviously jacoby Brissett is a field general it just means that in here it's scrambling and as far as i remember that has something to do with just the way they react to to pressure inside the pocket stuff like that um but yeah that's it that's the trait edits um you're done with it after that and you're good to go um what was i gonna tell you oh that's what i was gonna say okay uh one other thing um that i always suggest doing is you know so if you're doing a franchise I can go ahead and show you my 49ers one that I've been doing forever. I have a folder for, first of all, I have a folder for the 49ers. That's my 49er franchise that I'm running right now. Um, another thing, you can run multiple franchises with a tool, but you have to make a copy of each tool to run it. So, for example, this is a copy of my old tool that I've been using for my 49ers franchise. If I wanted to go into a Chargers franchise, I have to make a copy of the original. That ha Or it doesn't even matter if it's been ran, to be honest, because you can just clear it all and restart it. But anyways... Make a copy of the original and put that copy into a folder for your new Chargers one, and then you run it like that. But you can't run multiple franchises with the same tool at the same time because, as I told you, uh, it uses information every time you do an import during the progression and regression stage for the next stage. Um, I hope that makes sense. So, anyways, uh, the way I always set it up is, I again, I have a folder that has my, my franchise that I'm doing, and then I just go by each year. And, or I, had a, I have a copy of, you know, this is my depth chart tool and other stuff that I've created, the scout tool and things like that. This is the old trade edits tool. It's going to be combined all in one. Um, but then I drop a copy of my, my progression tool, which is going to be my new one. The 5.0 is going to be in here. And then I just have a folder for each year where all my other exports and imports go um, for that year. That way I have all the copies set up. Everything's good to go. Then I go to the next year, do it like that. Another reason for this is when you get off-season reports, when you generate those, when you generate your progression reports, when the tool spits out a file for you to use, like the trait one we just saw, if there's a copy already in a folder that has that same name, it's just going to overwrite it. So you need to have your own separate folders to make everything more organized. Um, otherwise, you might lose a file that you need later on. There's nothing that's going to pop up and say there's a file that already exists with this name. Would you like to overwrite it? The way the tool works is it just copies over. So make folders for your stuff um anyways that was it for the trait tool close this thing very simple very sweet um yeah so that's it so the next one uh up that i'm going to be doing is the ability tool and i will get that going fairly shortly